Hi there and welcome to my channel on chemistry lessons. Please make sure you like and subscribe. This video looks at the term optical isomerism and it looks at how we draw the two different optical isomers. Uh, you do require knowledge on how to identify chiral carbons, which is in a previous video, and the next video will look at the significance of these isomers with plane polarized light. Okay, so let's consider this molecule then, fluoromethane. Now, if you're lucky enough to have a molly mod at home, which you probably don't, so I've got my camera on so you can see, if you were to make this molecule, the one on the right will look something like this. So these are 3D. So there's the molecule on the right, with the fluorine being the green and out at the front. And if I make the molecule on the left, which is the mirror image, there we go. We've got two molecules there, mirror images of each other. Now, the fact is that these molecules are exactly the same. I can actually take the molecule on the right and I can rotate it round to be the molecule on the left. And likewise, I can take the molecule on the left, just rotate it round and it becomes superimposable identical molecules. So both of these molecules here are absolutely identical in every way. This time round, if we consider this molecule, the big difference being this molecule now, the carbon that you can see in the middle, is in fact a chiral carbon because there are four different groups attached this time. The previous molecule was not a chiral carbon. So this time, there's my molecule on the right. That way around, get it right, there we go, with the OH, red being at the top, the green coming out at you being the CH3 group, the blue group is representing that COOH, that carboxylic acid group, and the white on the right being the hydrogen. And then if I make the molecule on the left, hold that up here, you can see there we go, the molecule on the left and the molecule on the right, we've made them as 3D. Now, the significance now as being mirror images, if I try and just simply rotate them round so the blues match up, so the blues are now superimposable, you can see that the molecule is not superimposable. These two molecules are not the same thing. No matter what I do, how I rotate them, they are non-superimposable mirror images. The only way I can make these molecules identical is to actually physically break the bonds and put them back together in a different way. In other words, change the actual molecule. So these two molecules are definitely, definitely different. They are non-superimposable mirror images. And that's what we call stereoisomers, optical isomers. So it's a form of stereoisomers. They are specifically uh, optical isomers. An optical isomer is a non-superimposable mirror image due to a chiral center or a chiral carbon. So when you've got these two optical isomers, these two mirror images, they are called enantiomers. So that's the term we give them, we call them enantiomers. I suppose it's similar to when you did geometric isomerism, which was the other form of stereoisomerism, we called them E and Z isomers. We call these enantiomers. Now, our A-level specification doesn't go any further than this. We don't need to assign um, specific names. You may see D and L, you may see plus and minus, but we do not talk about that at A-level. Now, a 50-50 mixture is known as a racemic mixture. So if you've got a solution of this compound, this substance, and if you've got an equal 50-50 mixture of both enantiomers, we call that a racemic mixture. That becomes significant for the next video where we talk about the effect on plane polarized light. So we can often be asked to draw these enantiomers. Now, there's always going to be four groups because it has to be a chiral carbon. Therefore, the carbon is always going to be tetrahedral. So what we need to get comfortable with is drawing these tetrahedrals and drawing the mirror image of the tetrahedral. So here we can see two tetrahedrals. They're both mirror images of each other. OK, that line in the middle would be a mirror and you can see they are reflected. Let's have a look at an example. So identify the chiral carbon in 2-chlorobutane and draw the pair of enantiomers. I'm suggesting you pause the video and have a go at doing this on your own. And when you're ready to go through it, unpause the video. OK, first things first then is to identify the chiral carbon. So 2-chlorobutane. There's 2-chlorobutane. 
I'm going to ignore the CH3, the CH2 and the CH3. It only really leaves me one option, but let's double check. So this chiral carbon, one of the groups is a chlorine. One of the groups is a CH3. The third group is a H. And the final fourth group is a CH2, CH3. We can see that all four groups are different. Therefore, it's classed as a chiral carbon. So now we've identified the chiral carbon, what I'm going to do is draw one of the enantiomers. So I'm just going to draw myself a tetrahedral. It's important that I draw it 3D. The wedge, the solid wedge, is trying to show it coming out of the page. The straight lines are showing in plane of the page, and the dashed line is showing it going into the page. Now I can draw my four groups anywhere. It really doesn't matter. I'm just going to randomly assign them CL at the top, CH3 here, CH2, CH3 here, and H. I can assign those four anywhere on that tetrahedral. It really doesn't matter. What becomes important, though, is that when I do draw the mirror image, so I'm drawing my plane, my mirror, I must draw a reflection of that. So the top group must be chlorine on the mirror image. I draw my dashed line here, and that must be a CH3 group. And then my wedge group must be CH2, CH3, and then the final group on the line is the H. So the mirror image must match the first molecule you've drawn. And that's the end of the video on optical isomers and how we draw the enantiomers. Make sure you check out the next video, which is going to look at how we use plain polarized light to identify or distinguish between the two enantiomers.